Hi guys, Sergar here. Uh, just before the start of the video, uh, I would like to say that when I have recorded the video, uh, it was uh, planned to be uh, one full video with three uh, gameplay review. But uh, after recording it, I've seen that the video was one hour uh, long. So I decided to cut uh, the video uh, in two parts. So uh, that's right. Well, so this is the first part. I hope you will enjoy uh, the video and see you next time. Toi Serga, at your service. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I am Serga and I'm pleased to meet you again on Total War Elysium. And uh, today, it, this will be not a deck review video, but a gameplay analysis because um, I've streamed yesterday uh, I've streamed a bit on Twitch and uh, some of you are not on this platform or not following me but uh, you can do it by uh, clicking on the link in the description to uh, go through to my Twitch channel and during some of this live uh, I'm doing at least one live a week on Total War Elysium well, I try to do it, to do so, but during this kind of live, I, I love to explain my gameplay. I love to explain why I'm doing this, why I'm doing that, why I'm trading here and not going face, etc. But uh, this is a kind of content that you are missing if you're just following uh, the YouTube channel. So I think it was good to uh, share with you and to invite you to come to uh, to come to see my stream uh, if you want to have this kind of uh, gameplay analysis. So today I'm going to show you three games, um, two as Priam against Agamemnon and one as Davu against Agamemnon. Um, it was against Agamemnon because I matches a lot of uh, Agamemnon's uh, yesterday. So, and the game was very interesting, uh, quite, ni quite nice to play and yeah, Agamemnon is one of the best generals right right now, and I think it's a good thing that uh, if you can have share some gameplay analysis uh, against him, because uh, I will try to show you what is his win condition, what is our win conditions, and how you can play around it, and how you can beat it, a bit him at the end of the game. So let's stop the game. We are going first and I will pick my first end. So Campfire, Stockade, Army Recruiters, Irish, St. Mason, Man the World, Trample and Trojan Defender. So this is always my opening end and it's I think a very good opening end because as you don't care as Priam about the one and the two first round. Okay, uh, one first round you will always uh, display defense yourself and turn two you can still display defense yourself because your opponent will not have the cards and will not have the board to, um, to to push a lot of damage in your face. So to be able to have two attack as Priam in the early game is very important. It's very very good thing. Uh, Campfire, it's a good structure that can heal uh, yourself and it uh, combos well with Man the Wall because it has already one attack, so you don't need to push uh, to buff your structures with Stun Mason and just push a Man the Wall on it. Uh, Stockade because it works very well with Stun Mason. You have uh, on turn 3, uh, if you have Stun Mason and Stockade in hand, you have 1, 1, 3, and 2, 2, 3 uh, structure on the board that can uh, combo with Man the Wall. Armed Recruiters is very strong with Priam because you can boost it, you can boost it to free attack and, and uh, deploy free tokens. Enrich is very good with the tokens and it can become 1-6 uh, if boosted by Stun Mason or 2-7 if boosted by um, Display Defense. Stun Mason because you play a lot of a lot of structure is very good card good, uh, good card in the early game. Trample is very good because this turn is help you to make trades. It uh, kills some units and at the late game it kill uh, can kill your opponent. Man the wall for the draw and give short trench to structure can be very good to the to the trade. 
and uh, Trojan Defender because the stun uh, to be able to gain charge range when you play a structure and stun a unit is very very important it helps you to uh, tempo the game to uh, control your opponent So, uh, we got a pretty bad end here, but it's okay, we are just gonna display defense ourselves and then uh, I wish we can play I Witch next turn or, or just wait and display defense ourselves again. My opponent here does nothing because I, have, I assume he has nothing to do. And here I will play Stun Mason because it's always good to have Stun Mason. My opponent has no board, so he can't trade it pretty fair, pretty. Uh, you can't trade it uh, right now uh, on the board, so the only way that uh, my opponent can kill Master Mason right now is to play Supply Cash into War Dogs to kill it. This is the only way he can uh, he can uh, he can kill the Stun Mason. And if he have not the cards, if he has the combo, then uh, again, then I can play I Ridge or I can play Castle Wall next turn and put a lot of structures that can uh, retaliate back when uh, attacked, so that's pretty good. Okay, so as I said, my opponent here is uh, gonna supply cash and war dogs. So it will deal uh, 3 damage on, supply on my uh, stun mason, push one on Priya, it's okay. So here I can just play into Gen Defender or I can put High Ridge plus to, uh, Despite Defense. I will put High Ridge Despite Defense because it becomes a 2 7. It's really difficult to pass. He need to go, uh, he need to, uh, to send his War Dogs on it and it will only deal one damage. So at the moment I'm just blocking here. So yeah. At this moment he is just blocked and he can do nothing about it. So, if you play the Greek Militia, push one damage, push one more damage, but I'm pretty okay about that. Here, I think I will just play Torian Defender because it challenge, it becomes one six, one six, challenge the War Dogs, and I'm pretty good with that. Plus, uh, despite defense, I reach, so we can trade it fairly, can't, uh, so we need to kill this unit to trade it. And here, I got Cassandra. So Cassandra is pretty good, she's pretty good because we are even on the board, I'm not under pressure due to, uh, due to the high reach boosted and the, uh, high, the high HP pool of the Trojan Defender, so Cassandra here is very very good and like I show, I can next turn just cast a wall, display defense and have big big structures, uh, two eleven structures on the board that we just uh, let my opponent uh, block my opponent uh, again. So here my opponent is to Divine Intervention, which is kind of good because he'll, uh, he avoids the stun and just trade in my uh, in my unit, but the card is still here, so I'm pretty confident again. And here I got the second man the wall, which is not the best card to be honest. Uh, the second man the wall is pretty correct, but uh, I have no cards to combo with. I don't want to play Stockade because it's just free trade for him. So I will put... Instead I will put my uh, my castle wall. It becomes a 0 10. So again it will tank a lot of damage. He can't kill my Cassandra on board, so which is good. And uh, the... Um, and again, the um, the high ridge is, bo is boosted, so he can't pass my front line right now. So he will just trample on Cassandra, which is unfortunate, but kind of expected. He will trade on the Trojan uh, on my Trojan uh, defender to kill it and just push damage. On my uh, and just and push damage uh, on my structure. 
So I put a campfire, so campfire helped me to uh, just uh, campfire here is, here is helping me to uh, to man the wall next turn. So uh, I will have one structure that can attack. I move one of the militia back with my nice to the draw uh, and protect. So he can't trade, he can't kill right now uh, on the board. He can't kill my uh, castle wall, and I draw the army recruiters. But I think I will just want to protect again with display defense on the high ridge. A med recruiter can wait one turn. So, still pushing damage on my uh, on my units, on my on my castle wall, sorry, and. And pass. So I'm pretty good. I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna mine the wall for the draw. Plus I'm having uh, one stun mason here, so that's perfect. I'm gonna stun mason into stockade. So he can't kill the two. Uh, he can't kill two. Uh, the two structure right now. Plus it become too far due to high ridge. I'm still gonna boost high ridge again. And now I'm gonna mine the wall next turn on one of the palisades. So I'm gonna be in a pretty, pretty, pretty good state here. Okay, so he's still pushing damage, destroying the, uh, the castle wall. And then he's gonna trade on my stun mason. Because it can't truly really do, uh, can't really do so much. Okay, out of position here is kind of sad because uh, that means I can't kill my uh, my opponent right now. But this war dogs here, this trade, I think this trade is not pretty good because yes, he is killing Master Mason, which is a good thing for him. But now I just have a free, uh, I just have a free, uh, have a free trade with my fire comp. I've got Troilus too, so that means I can stun uh, his board pretty fairly next turn, when, uh, when, whenever I want. And I would here. Um, okay, uh, I'm just gonna back from two seconds. So here I'm hesitating between. Picking Citadel of Troy and picking um, Divine Intervention. My opponent has played no cards uh, since, or nearly no cards, he has not uh, since two turns. So he has not deployed any boards since two turns. That means that he may have. Either some sorry, sorry, sorry. So uh, either you have some event cards that you don't want to use it like uh, ritual sacrifice. Either you have he has uh, big uh, big provision cards that uh, he want to keep. Letters for a better opportunity like uh, Minotaurs, or maybe he has both. So Minotaurs, Minotaurs plus uh, Ritual Sacrifice with Heroic. It's just uh, uh, with Heroic. It's eight damage. So eight damage. It's pretty big for Priam. It's pretty important for Priam because. Uh, 8 damage even if you have uh, 15 uh, put you to uh, put you to 7 yes so here I know that I'm 13 so if he does his combo I'm using my last gasp so divine intervention will protect me from nearly anything from this combo but uh, in end I have already one Trample, I have Troilus, 
So I'm able to stun my opponent. I'm able to stun uh, Agamemnon for at least two turns. And two turns might be the time I need to deploy my Citadel of Troy and uh, just kill my opponent. And I know Citadel of Troy, uh, he, has, he has difficulties right now to kill High Ridge with his 2-7. He had difficulties to kill my Castle Wall which was 0-9. So he can't never kill my Citadel of Troy uh, next turn. So here I will take Citadel of Troy because I'm still high in life. I don't think I still have my last gasp. So I don't think I need Divine Intervention. And I would pick the of Troy because I'm pretty sure the card will uh, help me to have the win. Okay. So here I'm having out of position, which is really good because that means one turn, one more turn uh, in my end. So I can just stall the game. Um, I can just block the game until uh, for three turns, which is very, very, very good. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a little sick. I've taken cold due to the weather. So he cannot out of position me uh, a second time, which is kinda, uh, which it kinda sucks. But I'm okay. I'm just gonna trade, push one damage, kill uh, kill the units, or, or out of position. I, I prefer to out of position here because. Um, I have some draw because the cards make you draw. So uh, I advance in my deck, and draw will be very, very key in this kind of matchup. Plus, I, I'm I'm getting a demolition, which is really cool. So uh, so I'm pretty good. One thing that uh, make me pick uh, Stellar of Troy to uh, this game is uh, because I have at this turn is because. I have the last say on the daybreak, so I will be able to put my Stellar of Troy with it. My opponent can answer to that play, so that may be uh, really useful for this kind of game. Another War Dogs, it go to my, it go to my, uh, to my unit. I'm pretty okay with it and. He decided to uh, he decided to voyage to go back to the to the back lane. I got messenger here, so I'm picking messenger. I'm putting uh, shrine of Hephaestus on the front lane, trading the trading the front lane. Drawing first, very important. Out of position. That's nice. So I'm gonna trade, kill all, the, kill all of these units because I know that my opponent can uh, Minotaurs and uh, then, uh, yeah, he can Minotaurs and then uh, Sacrificial Ritual uh, on it. So I don't want him to be able to have this Minotaur able to with a plus one attack of the um, of the, uh, the Forge Run, of the Iron Forge, uh, it's not the real name of the card, but I, I forget his, uh, his name. So I don't want to have uh, plus one attack boost on the Minotaur. I have two provision left, so I'm gonna try loose and boost uh, my uh, High Ridge. I should have boost my. Um, I should have boost the. Um, my structure here. My 07. Yeah. And Minotaurs. So, yeah. Without that, it was not free trade here. So, Minotaurs, like expected. Ritual Sacrifice, like expected. Gonna move. Push 8 damage on my face. But I'm pretty okay because 
I'm pretty okay because I have Troilus in hand. Uh, I have Troilus on the board, so I can stun him. I have three Trample, so I can stun him three turns. So that means four turns of stun. Out of position, that means I can stun him, stun him again. So at the moment, I can stun my opponent five times. Doing five rooms, which is very, very, very important. So I know he can't kill me right now. But I still need to de uh, to despite defense myself because I don't know uh, he may have free trample in hand and just trample 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 me free uh, time killing me so here I'm eight life I'm pretty safe Garrison here is very nice because Garrison uh, just because it is unbreakable uh, it secure my front line because that means he need to kill every structures before uh, killing my uh, garrison so I'm pretty safe here he's gonna divine intervention himself but uh, you can still target the, uh, you can still target unbreakable units so I'm not going I'm going to, I'm going to use trample on his face not for the damage but just for the stun so yeah you have divine intervention yourself that's cool, but here I'm just gonna deploy some board. I'm just gonna put a Trojan wall and uh, desperate defense. Well, this is a kind of, of situation where you can lose on strategic triumph, but to be honest, you can't do anything against that. You can't do anything about, uh, about strategic triumph. Donc, don't play around. Play around what cards you know your opponent have at 100%, but uh, don't play around something that you don't know if your opponent uh, had it. Okay, I'm gonna trample again my, uh, my, my opponent. So he's stunned again and uh, despite defense myself again to put me to 8 life and feeling pretty pretty safe so here I'm just using my little more time to decide what I can do I will put a shiny Hephaestus on the back lane uh, just to be sure that uh, there is no shining gain uh, cavalry dealing for dealing damage etc so that's okay my opponent is going to divine intervention, play a short sword, trade. He's going to trade on Troilus, which is kind of strange, to be honest, but that's okay because that means I have one more turn. One sappers, so I'm pretty good here. I've got one out of position turn to, uh, to draw one card plus. Uh, to be able to uh, to be able to uh, to survive one more turn, I drew my demon intervention, which is good. I'm gonna use it to be sure that uh, nobody can kill me uh, this turn. Even if even if everybody is uh, is stunned, I'm just to be sure that uh, I can kill my uh, I can kill my opponent. I'm taking no risk here and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna win this game. But yeah. Don't take uh, don't take risk when uh, when you don't have to. Okay, he got one trample. He got two trample. So uh, yeah, putting me to eight was, was a very good idea here because I might just have dead if I didn't do it. Because I was dead, but here I'm pretty good. GG well played, I can just demolition my Trojan wall, deal five and use my trample, my last trample to kill my opponent. 
So, as you say, we have played against uh, what was the win condition of your opponent. So, Sacrificial Rituals is a big one. Uh, combo with Minotaurs is very, very... Uh, can be... Yeah, uh, it's one of the best win condition of my opponent. So... Yeah, uh, play, think what your opponent may ask uh, some cards. You have already seen things like Trample, so think that he can have one, two, maybe three Trample in hands. And, uh, and, yeah, and play around that card. See how he plays, because as you have seen, my opponent did not put some board for two free turns, so that means he has uh, cards that can only combo uh, with himself or he need to or he has cards that cost a lot uh, a lot of provision so he can't play them uh, right now so play against something like that and uh, you, you will improve a lot in uh, total war Elysium. so we are playing against Agamemnon is the same opponent as last game, so we know what he is playing, and uh, we are starting by despite defense. Again, we have stockade, so we are not playing stun mason right now. We want to play it next turn, so next turn we're gonna stun mason into uh, into palisade, which will be very good because it would we will put. Uh, some big structure on board. We have Castle Wall as following our Trojan Defender, so that's a great news too. And yeah, you are already have a big front line here, so um, we are in a pretty good spot at the moment. Okay. Since it's the same opponent, he know that I'm playing structure, I'm playing a lot of structure, so he has picked Sapper uh, as soon as possible. So here I've decided to uh, just uh, put, uh, so so it was a good thing to do, uh, to put the Sapper as soon as possible. Here I decided to put my uh, Trojan Defender because it's big, it's a big unit, it's resilient, it's turn, and we have a lot of structure for the following turns to give him um, short range. So I'm a pretty good step here. Uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good here. I'm gonna desperate defend my Palisade to make it tanker and be sure that nothing will uh, pass my front line. I have Trollus here. It can be. It will be good um, in the late game. So I'm pretty happy to have it. I would have, at this moment, maybe I, I would have preferred a Deiphobus, and but Prolus is okay. I'm gonna put uh, Messenger on my deck because the draw, like I said in the first match, in this kind of matchup, uh, to be able to draw, uh, it's very one of your win condition because that means you have the resources to have uh, to answer on what your opponent has played. So, uh, so yeah. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be very good. Here it's kinda uh, difficult because he has supply cash into Missenian Chariot, which is very good. And I'm in a not so comfortable situation, but I'm okay. I'm gonna man the wall, deal two, so kill one of the archers, then move Master Mason. It will die next turn. It's okay. And I would put Castle Wall because the card is just uh, very good. It'll be called 110. I will gonna stun uh, his archer to be sure that it will not attack. And the chariot, the middle and chariot, I don't care on this turn because uh, it will need one turn to move uh, on the front line and to attack me. So I'm pretty confident here that uh, nearly nothing can happen to me. So decide to ritual sacrifice, kill uh, his missing and chariot. Agamemnon will become du coup free uh, free twenty two, trade into my palisade, but that means my uh, stun mason is alive. 
and I'm gonna be able to uh, Shrine of Hephaestus. Deal one damage, I'm gonna kill the archers. Trample on another archer to kill it. I know I need to decide what I want to do. Um, do I prefer to play Campfire first and heal my uh, Stun Mason, or do I prefer to move my Stun Mason first and my Campfire become too free? The two choices are good. Uh, to be honest, I think I prefer to have one uh, Stun Mason that can buff my structures, than just one big structures buffed. So. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, I think uh, I think it was better. My opponent red on the Trojan Defender, move back with the Generals and gonna play uh, heavy cavalry. And here, the heavy cavalry on turn six, ha! Huh, it's not the kind of things you want to see. But I got to tough position, so I'm just gonna stun him, stun the cavalry. Draw a card. I got a trample for next turn, or I'm just gonna use it to kill the archers. Because I have twelve in hand, so I can stun pretty everything. And I'm gonna protect myself. I'm gonna move to my uh, Mason Mason because uh, next turn I may want to protect my uh, my back lane. So here is another uh, is another cavalry which uh, is really bad to me. That means that my opponent has picked, because we are only down day two, that means my opponent has picked two heavy cavalry, both on day one and day two. And this is kind of bad for me. So I'm going to take Devon Intervention here. No, uh, I'm really, I already have one in, the, in my hand. So, so yeah. I'm putting Trojan Wool, which is a good top deck. Uh, allow me to become uh, 14 that can trade on both cavalry and then I want to protect myself so I will put uh, I will put the stun mason here and Croelius on my uh, on my right why because he has two cavalry so he can flank me two times so if I put in Troilus on my right if he flank by the right he's killing Troilus and every uh, his board He's turned. So he can't do nothing with his board on this turn. If he flank me on my left, the cavalry uh, is he, uh, is tanked by the Stand Mason, then this, this cavalry is tanked by the Fire Cop. So that means this turn he does nothing. Which is a pretty good thing uh, to me. So yeah, I'm just gonna move the Stand Mason, put Troilus on board, and display defense to uh, protect my card. And not a for abuse, challenge one of my, uh, challenge my opponent line, so I'm pretty good step. Out of position here is very difficult, not gonna lie. And yeah, he flanked me both. Push a Greek militia. Ah, uh, Greek militia. I don't really care right now. It's just two two cards that does nothing. So I'm pretty good. I'm gonna move Troilus and then David intervention myself to protect me from damage. And here I'm pushing damage because um, I'm stunning the, the cards, so I can trade it next turn with my Trojan Wall and protecting uh, I'm protecting the shrine so it will not be able to trade it pretty uh, pretty fairly so next turn I know that I can stun his board entirely with uh, my friend uh, Trollus and I have protect myself with the divine intervention but 
I'm at low HP and he got another out of position, which was very, very, very difficult here. But he decided to trample. So he can't push damage on my face. He can't trade anything uh, without losing it or nearly without losing it. So trample to lose and killing it right now is kind of good for him. It's a good play because that means every unit here will be stunned but for this turn. So that means next turn, uh, while my unit, while my structure will be uh, will be stunned, he can play all of his units, so will be able to attack me both with the heavy cavalry and move uh, his unit on uh, and move this uh, his unit uh, back on uh, on the lane. I've got man the wall. I'm not gonna play it right now. Because, uh, because I want to protect myself. Uh, because I want to be able to draw next turn. And to have the element of surprise. He does not know. He, in, he's not aware I have uh, Man the Wall. So uh, in my end, so I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty good. His double Divine Intervention is Cavalry to not make them uh, taking damage. I didn't really understand this move, to be honest. And I didn't really understand why he has only attack once. Really, I, I did not understand this move because here I might 10. He has only attacked with this one and not with uh, and not with a, with a five four. So he was able to proc my last gasp here. I mean, why he can't do it? I don't understand why he didn't push the 5 more damage and put my last gas. But I think maybe in this head I was just at with one card, which was Man the Wall. And it was not a big bonus because he has four, four cards in hand. He doesn't want to give me more card advantage and me to be able to come back, I think. But it's a huge mistake. If you can proc the last gasp of your opponent, you you do it do it because uh you never know what will happen after that oh, okay sometimes it will play against you but 99 percent of the time it's uh it's a good play hey i'm picking instead of troy on the top deck which is really good so i decide just to push damage play steady of troy i still have my last gasp so i don't care to take to have to protect me right now i'm just kind of uh, push the, uh, the Citadel of Troy and the Bray effect, Citadel of Troy proking, dealing so much damage to my opponent face. And now I have full front lane uh, that he can't deal with it without out of position. And I'm a pretty good spot because I still have my last gasp. So uh, I'm very, 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 very good here. Okay, because now, if my opponent proced uh, my last gasp on last turn, I was dead here. To be honest, I, I was 100% dead here. So I don't know why, uh, what he does. I don't know what he has done. I'm just picking demolition here, so with demolition I'm good. That means that even if it out of position me, I can just demolish my style of Troy and deal 10 damage to his face. So funeral games with a draw. Alright. But now I'm just gonna punch damage with my demolition. I could have man the wall too. But yeah, GG well played. So here my opponent made a mistake. Uh, what you are what you need to learn here is just uh, if you can proc the last grasp of your opponent without nearly nearly any retaliation, just do it doing it because just do it because the game is never finished before the opponent general is dead. The game is never finished uh, if your opponent still have 
is last gasp. <laughs>